Do you need more customers walking through your shop's doors? Are you finding that the competition with online retailers is getting worse every day? Well, join me on today's episode of Brood Brilliance, where we will be talking through the five ways that you can get more customers walking through your doors quickly. Hello and welcome to today's episode, where we are going to be talking all about how you can get more customers walking through your shop's doors. I'm your host, Samuel Chapman, and we are going to be diving into the strategies that your shop needs to start implementing so that you can make the most of passers-by and getting more foot traffic walking into your shop. As independent business owners, we know the importance of foot traffic. Well, without it, we wouldn't have much of a business, would we? But we need to create more than just people walking through your doors into your shop. That's the bare minimum. We now need to create experiences that gets those customers talking, that gets them wanting to buy from you, that gets them wanting to when they leave after having an amazing experience to talk about you to their friends, their family, to anyone else they meet and start referring them back into your business. So that's part of what we are gonna go through today. Throughout these five steps, I am going to show you how you can start creating experiences. I'm gonna show you how you can start working with local businesses to enhance your shop's presence. And I'm gonna throw in a couple of extra secrets to help you make the most of your business. With the rise in online shopping and the change in our customers' habits, which have changed dramatically in just the last few years, how do we get customers walking into our stores? How do we get them buying more? And how do we get them talking about us? Well, this leads me to my first step. And this might seem simple and the most obvious, but it's the one that is so often looked over by too many shop owners. And when they do it, they don't do it to its best ability. And that is creating signage and window displays that speak to your customers. Here is where we want you to capture your future potential customers' attention. We want you to create bold window displays. We want you to have signage that reflects your brand's personality and the values that you stand for. We need you to start speaking directly to your perfect customer's problems, frustrations, irritations, or their desires, and then creating a story as to how you can take them from where they're at right now, and how when they come into your shop and spend money on your products or your services, how you can take them to a place that will make them feel better about themselves, to a place where they will be able to feel happier And this is where it all begins. Your shop front should be a reflection of your brand's identity and any values that you hold as well. What we want you to do is to make sure that every element of your signage continues the same color scheme that you have when you promote your business. We wanna make sure that any typography and wording is continually the same, whether it's used online or offline. So when your future potential customers see the color and the words together, they know it's you. They know it's you speaking to them about any problems or frustrations or desires they might have. And how, when they come to you, you can solve that for them. We want it to be instantly recognizable. We don't want your customers to have to think about anything. We want to be there solving it for them straight away. So here are some examples as to how you can do this. If you own a boutique or you sell handmade jewelry, you might want to consider using like soft, earthy colors. You want it to be a reflection of what your customers' needs are. But we also want to reflect the handmade nature of what it is that you do. If you have a vintage bookstore, you might want to create signage that feels like it's a step back in time so it feels cozy and there's a nostalgic element to what it is that you're speaking about we want there to be an atmosphere and somewhere that you can encourage your customers to actually sit and read and take time out to relax these are the needs of those customers 
And this is how your signage, how your wording, and what it is that you say on your posters actually really make a difference. We want your storefront to tell your customers a story. Whether that's a story of your business, or whether it's a story of how your products and services can help your perfect customer. We want there to be changing themes so your window displays change on a regular basis and they don't just become unseen by passers-by. We want there always to be an element of something that's different that captures their attention. What can you do for your business that you could separate into either seasonal trends Local trends that are going on around your, around your area where you live, how can you make it fit in so that you can stand out? What is it that you could do with your products and services to go from, to show your customers how they can go from a state of what they're feeling now to what they could be feeling after they've had your products and services? It's about creating this story and the connection between the two so that they realize you are the experts in what you do and also that you're knowledgeable and they will then have more trust in what it is that you are giving them before they've even walked through your doors. If you can, we want your window displays to have big visual elements about them that can spark curiosity and bring customers in. We're being advertised to so much that we need to create either big catchy slogans that go into our windows that peak curiosity or get people to know about us a little bit more, whether it's our personality or the products or services that we are selling. Or can we have interactive uh, boards that are in our windows that you see them a lot in uh, estate agents where you can swipe through and see the different homes they have on offer. You could have a QR code that leads to a section on your website that then is either is something interactive or a video playing so they can understand who you are a little bit more. They can understand the products or services that you're displaying in your window a little bit more. You can get them to connect just a bit more with you and what it is that you're selling more so than if it was just an arrangement in the window. I want you to consider using different lighting because there's a way in which you can either draw attention to a particular element within your window display, or you could draw it away from it. If all of the lighting in your windows are exactly the same, it can turn into just being a monotone window display. I mean, that's, that's basically it. But if you can draw attention to certain parts where you can have light and shade, going through your window display, it will mean to the eye, it will capture it more so as people are walking past. So if you were an outdoor shop, for example, you could have torches set to light up different elements of what it is that you want to highlight in your window display. If you were a homeware shop, you could have lamps placed in different places to highlight just slightly different areas of either different furniture or different um, posters or wording that you might want to have there. This is a really clever way to start drawing the eye and it then, once you capture it in a certain place, it will draw them into the other part as well that's not so lit up and it will get them to see your storytelling using what you've put in place, your posters and how the lighting. This is a way of getting everything to work together seamlessly so that your customers are taken on a journey and will then want to walk through your doors to buy from you. So whatever you do, we want you to keep it fresh, we want you to keep it dynamic, we want you to keep it changing with the times. There's a restaurant near me here and uh, every season they change their whole, it's like a doorway, window thing, it's a whole installation they put out there. Um, and I'm not saying you have to do this, but this is a, an exaggerated example of what really works. Because I know every season it will change. I know that I want to go and see what it's like. I want to see what they've done next. And I can't tell you the amount of photos that get taken, 
And guess what people do with those photos? They show friends, they show family, they put it on social media. That is free marketing. Okay, it might have cost them to put this thing in place, but the amount of free publicity, free marketing that they are getting because they have done this, and they've very cleverly got different uh, places where they've got their signage, so they know that in every single photo, people are seeing the name of their restaurant. And I know I go out of my way to see it. And it's drawn me in there probably more times than it would have done otherwise, because I'm interested in what it is they've got to do. It shows me that they care about their business. It shows me that actually, if I'm choosing from their restaurant compared to another one who just always looks the same, there's no difference there, who do I think is more invested in their customer experience? Who wants more customers walking through their doors so they're willing to scream and shout about it and make themselves be seen? And this is your first step in being seen by your customers, by you creating window displays that speak to their needs and that will draw them in. And then we move on to our next step. We want you to be the hub of your local businesses community. So we want you to not only be part of whatever it is your local community are doing, but we also want you to start to create your own little community as well. People who are avid followers of what you do and believe in what it is that you can do for them. So here are some ways in which we can get you to start building on your community and get people to trust you even more so before they've even become a customer of yours. So we want you to offer workshops, classes, evenings, nights together, where you can draw new potential future customers into your business, where you can show them either how something was made and get them to make it too. We want to show them if they might have any big questions about how your products or services work, there can be demonstrations. We can get them involved in the process and in the understanding of how to make the most out of what it is that you have to sell. This is a way of getting high engagement from people. And if you can cleverly make these classes, workshops, show them the benefits of what it is that you are selling them and answer any of your frequently asked questions throughout these events. So, you will find that in your business that there will be frequent questions that tend to come up about what it is that you sell. Well, during your event, you need to make sure every single one of these frequently asked questions is answered and answered in detail. Because if you can answer any questions going through your future potential customer's mind before they've had to ask it, they're sitting there going, Oh, they know their stuff. Oh, they understand me. Oh, they care about me. And that is one step closer to them making a purchase from you than if they have to keep coming to you asking questions. They have to then wait for a response. They have to go searching for an answer. That isn't an ideal experience. So if we can take this one step nearer to them by giving them a great experience in terms of an online online or offline uh, workshop or class or whatever it might be for them and really show them your values, the value and the benefit of what it is that you have to offer and that you care because this is something that an, an online only business can't compete with. You could organize pop-up markets. So this is best used in a, like a collaborative way if you can get any other small businesses around your area involved as well. But if you can maybe speak to, so say, right, you're a clothing boutique, you could speak to a baker's, a jewellery, local artists, food vendors, and create this experience within your local area where you can draw people in, you can create flyers, you can make sure every single small business that's involved talks to their customers about it. Well, then 
what you're doing is creating this little bubble where people will want to come and support you and see what it is that you have to offer. And if people that would normally frequent the other businesses that are involved and they haven't been to you yet, they will come along and this is giving you new eyeballs onto what it is that you have to sell. This is you being put in front of people that might not have otherwise walked past your shop and seen where you are. This is you and you using this opportunity to its fullest to create a moment and an experience that they would get when they come into your shop and you're taking it to them. You're putting it into another situation which is more convenient for them and you are giving them every single reason to either buy from you in that instance or for them to come to your store and walk away with the reason to come into your store. Things like vouchers, it was nice to meet you, and uh, maybe even a little freebie or a sample that they could walk away with. You just wanna make sure that this is an opportunity while you're working and supporting other local businesses, that when you have all of these new people coming to your stall, they are walking away with something a reason for them to come and spend more time with you. So, as well as hosting your own events and putting on pop-up stalls, we want you to become a part of what is whatever it is that your local community puts on. So, whether that be an environmental day, whether that be a wellness day, whether there be different charity options, we want you to take a look and see everything that's on offer within your local area and then see which of these community aspects you could tap into so that you could show your local community that you're here to support them and as the law of reciprocity shows they will come and support you in return so it might mean going on a litter picking day it might mean you doing a walk to support a charity. It could be all sorts of things. But what it is, is that you want to do is make sure that whatever charity or event that you decide to be a part of, or even sponsor, you are getting in front of more of your perfect customer. You are able to use whatever it is that you're doing in any extra marketing to show the community that you're not here just to try and make money from them. You want to be a part of that community as well. And you're happy to give back because that is what they want to know about. We need you to look for and identify the local businesses in your area that are complementary to yours. We don't want people who are gonna be too similar to what it is that you offer or offer the same thing because then you're looking at direct competition. But let's say, right, you were a fitness studio and you partnered with a nutritionist or a health food store. These are businesses that are complementary to each other, but you could put on an event to work with each other to have a wellness day. And that way, anyone that's interested in wellness or that's interested in one of those three stores will be more likely to come and take part. And you could offer a promotion if you visit all three shops or you could offer something for free or whatever it is that you decide to do that works for all three businesses in this instance. It could be two businesses if you would prefer. But the way it has to work is that you need to find people that are targeting a similar audience to the people who are your perfect customer. Then when you look at those shops, which of those people are going to help give your customers an extra added value or an extra benefit that you can't currently offer them on your own. Engage with local influencers, whether they are influencers on social media, whether they are influencers within your local area. These people who have values that align with your values or your business's values are likely to have people that follow them that have the same values that are in alignment with yours. So what we want you to do is find out who these people are, invite them to your workshops, invite them to your events, 
Invite them to any product launches you might have, anything that you're doing. Invite these people along. See if they will post about it on their social media. See if they'll post about it on their e-newsletters or anything else that they speak directly to their following on. Get them to share the amazing service, the amazing products that you have. And then in turn, these people that they are speaking to will be more likely to trust you because they already trust this influencer. And if they're recommending something that you're doing, these people will buy into you a lot quicker than they might do otherwise. Now we're gonna talk about you using your digital presence and your online visibility to be seen by more people, to get your shop front seen by as many people as physically possible, even if they're not walking past it. And this is what so many people forget about. You can have a shop that is in the corner of this village where nobody even sees it. But by using digital marketing, you can spread the word not just to that tiny little village, but to the towns around it, to talk about the experience that you offer, to talk about the services and the value and the benefit that you offer. By using social media, you can show people what your space is like. You can show them behind the scenes and introduce new products, new services, and the reasons why you're introducing it. You can take people on a journey from how they're feeling right now to how they will feel when they start using what it is that you have to offer. You're, through your digital marketing, through your online visibility, you can use reviews. You can use uh, local directories such as Google My Business, you can use uh, Yellow Pages even. There are so many different avenues that you can use to boost your online visibility, to bring people into your world, to get that trust from people, which will then lead to them wanting to come into your shop, wanting to come and spend money in your shop, and then because the experience that they're receiving from you is so amazing, they'll be talking about it to their friends and family as well and bringing them in for the ride. As part of your online visibility strategy, I also want you to consider using adverts. Now, these have to be done really carefully because we don't want you wasting any money on adverts that don't turn into customers. However, by using things like Google, by using Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever it is that your customers, your future potential customers, spend their time. This is where we want to start advertising. And if you have, there are different variations of adverts that you could run to get more people to know who you are and then remember who you are. The first one is to get people to know who you are. So this is reaching out to a cold audience that might be searching for your business on Google. Well, if you have Google Ads set up, you can come on the top of their search terms. It says sponsored at the top. And if they're typing in what it is that you have to offer that you have set your adverts up for, and this is uh, paid for by pay per click. So you only pay if somebody clicks through onto your website. And really you wanna make that onto a specific page on your website, which is ever in relation to what it is that they're searching for. So it doesn't just take them to your homepage because that might not be what they want to see. They might want to be searching for a particular product or service that you offer. So you should have a page that relates to that product or service on your website so they can then read about it and then either buy online or have an incentive to come into your shop to come and buy from it there. The other type of advertising is then remarketing. So this is people that have either clicked onto your Instagram page, your Facebook page, people that have clicked onto your website even. And then we can follow these people around the internet and your adverts can pop up to remind them of you. And this is probably one of the most powerful types of advertising because you are then a constant reminder wherever they click have you ever noticed when you've gone onto someone's Instagram profile, 
And then when you're swiping through your stories or through your feed, you start seeing more and more of what this person has to offer. That's because they have got retargeting adverts on. So I don't know what your budgets are for this, um, but I would really strongly recommending that you start looking at a type of advertising which can run alongside your organic marketing and your organic advertising, which then can be seen by more people, you'll be remembered by more people. And these people will then have further incentives to come to your shop and then start buying what you have to offer. And my fifth and final point to help you get more customers walking through your shop doors today is for you to create exceptional customer experiences. And I don't mean you just saying, I, I talk to so many shop owners, right? And every single person says, well, we have great customer service. And when I talk to them about it, they don't really have great customer service. They just have customer service. Well, we need to think about this in terms of customer experience. Do you say you have a great customer experience? Because this is what I want to talk about now and how you can get your customers doing your advertising for you because you have given them such an amazing customer experience that they want to talk about you. You have given them a reason to talk about you, your shop and your products and services to their friends, their family and anybody else that will listen. So I believe a great customer experience starts from when somebody walks through the doors. Can you say that whenever a customer walks through your doors, they're greeted by somebody and not just uh, someone slouched behind the desk and you're right. What I mean is somebody is there. They walk up to them to welcome them to your shop. They ask if there's anything that you need, please come and find me. I'm happy to help you. If they're more capable to say, is there anything that I can help you with today? Because we want to make sure that every single person, and this is, has to be consistent, if you start doing this, which I strongly encourage, you have to make sure this happens consistently to every single person that walks through your doors, that they are greeted with a smile. They're greeted with a hello, welcome. And then they are given the opportunity as to whether they can ask questions or they say, look, if you want to browse, feel free. I'm just over here. If you need any help, please come and get me. Because then you have broken down the barriers between you and them. And you have stopped them from feeling like, oh, I don't know if I can ask questions. I don't know if they're too busy for me. You've already said to them, look, I'm here for you. Because let's be honest, you are. You have to be there for your customers and they have to know that. From our greeting and our welcome, we then move on to having an attentive service and where we can anticipate the needs of our customers. Can we offer things like gift wrapping? Can we offer things like, well, you're, I can see you're buying this today. Did you know that if you bought this as well, they could either have a promotion, did they know that if they bought this as well, they could get a bigger, better, faster benefit than if they were to buy the one thing on its own? So you're also upgrading customers, but showing them the knowledge that you have and showing them actually, I can see you're buying this. Did you know that this was the case? Did you know that if you bought this as well, you could have this or this or this? It doesn't always have to be a discount or a promotion, it can just be, this is the added benefit that you would get if you bought these two items together. You're showing them that you care about them. You're also creating more ways to increase your average sale and get more money without having to have more customers walking through your door. Even better. So we want all of your team to be trained as soon as they start working for you and then we want them trained every single month. If you book out an hour every month to make sure that you sit and talk to your team to go through any new products or services you have coming into your shop, 
to make sure that you talk to your team so they know how to recommend these products and services to new customers, to returning customers. They know what they go alongside. So if somebody is to pick up an item, well, actually, we've got this new item here that would complement this perfectly. If you don't show your team how they can make this work for your customers, well, how can they do this? How can they do it? If you're not physically showing your team how you want them to treat your customers, well, how, are they, how do they know to do that for you? You can't expect anything. You can't expect people to walk through your doors without giving them a reason to. You can't expect your team to make sales without showing them how to do it. You can't expect your customer to buy more than what it is that they've come in for if they aren't shown the value and the benefit of anything else that you have. So this is why it's so important to make sure that your team are trained and to make sure that they can do it without it coming across as feeling pushy. This is about putting your customer first and realizing what it is that they might need from you and how you can anticipate that and blow them away by doing it before they even have to ask for it. So you offer it up front. Once your customer has made a purchase from you, I cannot stress this enough that small businesses do not collect customers' email addresses anywhere near as much as they should do. And the reason I want you to start collecting your customers' email addresses is so that you can follow up with them. So that once they've got home, you can then send out an email to say thank you. Thank you for shopping with us today. If you have any questions or if you need any help with the product or service that you've had from us, we are happy to help. Please contact us on this address or phone us on this number. You are showing them how much you care about them. And if you've got separate email templates set up for whatever it is that your customer has bought, and you've got some top tips listed on there to say, thank you for buying this today. Here are some top tips to make the most out of your purchase. You've listed them down, you've sent it off to them. Imagine, imagine being a customer that's come in and bought something. You go home later on the day or maybe the next day, you get an email to say, thank you. Here are some top tips to make the most out of your purchase. That would blow me away. And it would blow me away because nobody's doing it. Nobody is making the most out of these extra sales and saying, right, I'm here for you. I'm gonna help you. And then once you have that email address, you can then put together a weekly newsletter, which just continues to send added value, added benefit, added tips behind the scenes of your shop, of what it is that you offer. So your customer is always being reminded about you. They will always be in the front of their mind. So then they will trust you more. They will talk to their friends more about you and they will want to come back into your shop more often. So all of the strategies that I've spoken to you about today are not just about getting customers through your doors. This is about getting trust. This is about building communities. And this is about having connections that small businesses need to have within their local areas. So, what can you do to drive foot traffic to your small business? Well, the first one that I've gone through today is you need to have great signage. You need to have amazing visual merchandising that tells a story of your business and this is changed every month. So you don't just become forgotten about and ignored as people start walking past. This is a constant, ah, oh, amazing. They've done this, they've made an effort and this is how they're telling me a story with their window displays. The second step is to engage with your local community and go to your community events. And then we want you to create your own workshops, events, VIP nights, however it might be that works best for you, where you can show new customers what value and benefit you can give to them. You can answer any questions they might already have in their minds and you can hold VIP nights for your existing customers where they can bring new customers with them 
and create a demonstration or a, a bigger event for them to get involved with that is more hands-on, that is an amazing thing for them to go home and talk about having had this shared experience. Then our third one is to start partnering and collaborating with either other small businesses or other local influencers. We want you to create these amazing connections with other people in your area and then start working together so you can put on bigger events, you can put on workshops together and get sharing the customers that they might have into your business and vice versa. And then we want you to enhance your digital presence. So you are making the most out of your social media, your website, your e-newsletter, your um, adverts. We need all of these things to be working together in tandem. So we're speaking to your customer, we're telling them everything they need to know, and then we're advertising to them. So once they've left your website or your social media page, they are getting a constant reminder of you and what it is that you offer. And then finally, we are creating exceptional customer experiences so that your customers feel like they belong to you and to your community. They know that you care about them. They understand that everything that you do is to support them and to give them as much value and benefit as they can possibly get. When you can do all of these things, you will find that you will get more customers walking through your doors. You will get more customers that are existing telling other new customers to come through your doors. This will work for you. You just have to do it. Because I believe that you can do it. I need you to believe that you can do it too. So, as always, if you have any questions about anything I've spoken about today, drop me a DM on Instagram at the Samuel Chapman. And also while you're on there, you can book your free 30 minute call to success where we can talk through everything that you have done in your business so far to find out what's worked for you, what hasn't worked for you and why. And then we can create a tailor made process for you to follow with strategies to help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have anything that you want to let me know at all or any ideas for future episodes, please just let me know. Until next time, take care.